In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, by the grace of God, we are given a most excellent gift. And this gift comes directly to us from none other than St. Paul himself. And it comes to us in the words that we just heard a few minutes ago. Words that he wrote to the church in Rome close to 1,500 years ago. And the words are just as relevant today as they were when St. Paul first wrote them. And at least as important, if not even more so now. And the great gift that he left for us on the day when he wrote that letter to the church in Rome is the gift of reminding us of who we are as people and what our specific purpose is as people and how important and how crucial our faith needs to be to us as we make our way in this world. In the opening sentence of the epistle that was read by Hytham this morning, we heard St. Paul tell the people to the church in Rome and to all of us who are listening this morning that his heart's desire, in other words, the one thing that matters to him the most, and his unending prayer to God, which was intended for all of God's people, is that all of them, without ethnic or religious distinction, may, by the grace of God's loving mercy, be saved. St. Paul's message was a friendly reminder for all of God's people. That means us. That we need to hold firm to the hope of eternal salvation. And then he went on to tell us that salvation is available to everyone. Everyone who believes in the gospel message. That Jesus lived, that he died, and that he was resurrected on the third day. And then he went on to tell us that our role in that salvation process is not only to believe, but also that it requires our total participation and our total cooperation with God. <clears throat> he says that we should not submit ourselves <clears throat> To our own set of standards or to our own way of righteousness, but that we submit ourselves to the righteousness of God. That's what he said in the epistle this morning. And he said that the righteousness of God requires our full participation with Him. Another word for righteousness which is found in the, gospel, in the scripture, means a faithful way of living, or a right way of living, or a just way of living. One that is completely acceptable and wholly pleasing to God. St. Paul says that we are called as human beings to present ourselves to this world as a living sacrifice, as a holy or a righteous body, and that this is our reasonable sacrifice to God. And why is this so important that St. Paul would spend the time to write this letter to Rome? Because, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is nothing more that Satan wants than for God's people to be separated from him. This is his whole sole purpose in life, to strip God's children from the very life 
that was given to them by the one who created them. A life that was meant for peace, and a life that was meant for joy, and a life that was meant for kindness, and a life that was meant for love. However, the sad reality is that the world we live in is a world that has become filled with anger and with division and with hatefulness and with immorality and with dissension and with selfish ambition. It's a world which is at least as broken as it was during the time of St. Paul when he wrote that letter to Rome, but I expect it's a world that is far more broken now and a world that is in desperate need for people to remember who they were created to be. Not people who have conformed to the ways of this world, but people who have been transformed by the renewal of their mind, as St. Paul says in a different place in the book of Romans. And people who present themselves to the world as God intended them to do so, to love each other, to show mercy towards each other, to show kindness to one another, to be humble and not self-serving, to be forgiving, to be thankful, to be peaceful, and above all, to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, and to work diligently to be continually united with him here in this life. How? Through worship and participation in the sacraments so that the lure found in the comforts offered by this world won't distract us from our ultimate goal, which is, as St. Paul says, to be saved and to enter into a world which is to come. God's heavenly kingdom. And in the gospel lesson that was read this morning, we heard about a group of swine herders and the people in their village who had given way to their own selfishness and given in to their own self-righteousness and had been so caught up by obeying their own set of standards, their own self-righteousness, that when God himself showed up and healed a man who was possessed by demons, they had no need for him. Their life was easy because they were in control. They were living for their own righteousness, not for God's righteousness. They had no room for God in their life. In fact, they thought that his presence was such a distraction that they actually begged him to leave the neighborhood. And in many ways, this seems all too familiar, doesn't it? We seem to live in a world that has lost its way. A world made up of people who have forgotten who they are. A world that preaches, among other things, number one, that success comes from man's effort alone instead of recognizing God's blessing in all things and remembering to thank him for those blessings. And number two, that we should love material things and use people to help us live a better life instead of loving people and using material things to help us live a better life. We've got it reversed. And number three, that God's church is irrelevant and out of date, and that anyone who reads the Bible is ignorant or naive. Instead of taking the time to explore the deep truths that are written 
in the pages within, the truths that never fade away. And number four, that prayer is not important and that faith and obedience to a higher power should be optional. Instead of humbly taking a more open approach to life and to the world around us and being willing to admit how fragile we really are in the greater scope of things. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as Christians, it's critical that we never forget who we are and never forget what we believe because our very life, the life of this world and our ultimate salvation depends on our faith and on what we believe. And as St. Paul teaches us today, we are called to live our lives in a way that continually unites us to Christ, to live a righteous way of life, lives that are pleasing and acceptable to God, lives that are designed to promote unity, not division, so that on the day when Christ returns to us as he promised, we won't be tempted to do as the swine herders did and the people in, the, in that village we heard about today who pushed them away, but that we will be fully equipped and ready to stand in complete humility and beg God never to leave us, but to stay with us for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.